Hi everyone, Sandy Carley here. I'm the director of School Outdoor Learning. We are bringing you Soul Interactive. This is the video channel that provides lots of free resources for teaching and learning outside. So the exercise we're going to share with you today is called Stepping Stones. It's a team building exercise that's lots of fun, high energy, and will really stretch your learners. At face value, it appears quite simple, but actually there are some things that we can add into it to make it really quite challenging and complex. So the great attraction of this task is its utter simplicity. All you're going to need is some cones or equivalent to create start lines and finish lines, and then the mats themselves. And we've got different varieties here. So these are simply car mats that we've cut up. Uh, carpet tiles work brilliantly well, but not so good in the wet. And if you're getting any part of your school covered with artificial grass, keep the offcuts. You can cut round those and make round shapes or square shapes add little rope handles to them all, and then you've got the ability to lay them down, pick them up really, really easily. The other thing that can work fantastically well, you've probably got around the school, is hula hoops. So they can be laid and picked up, uh, and they can act as the mats stroke islands to traverse through. So it's a task that works really well with anywhere between eight and 15 members in a team. All you need to do for the simplest version is give them one mat each and essentially they're gonna make a journey from the start line to the finish line by laying the mats down and making sure that they're always off the ground between the start line and the finish line by standing on the mats. Quickly they'll run out of mats to traverse the journey so they'll have to pass mats around uh, to the beginning and kind of keep the process rolling in that particular way. But if you wanna raise the bar and create significantly more challenge, what you can insist on is that every single mat that's laid down between the start line and the finish line has to be kept in contact with at least one person in the team at all times. So I couldn't do that and break contact with it. I have to maintain, maintain contact all the time. So I'd stand on that one. That's good. And now the next mat can be laid. I stand on that one. But before I take my foot off that one, my next team member has to be traveling behind and then they have to make contact with it and so on and so forth. That really adds to the challenge. The rules say that if you break physical contact with any one of the mats, the mat's removed, so it's no longer available for the team to use, and double whammy, the team has to go back to the beginning and start again with one less mat. And with the harder version, as they reach the finish line, the same rules still apply. So I could cross the finish line with this mat. We have to make sure we're making contact with the mat that's behind. And then, as we cross the finish line, we then also have to make sure that we're still holding the mats right until the last person has traversed across and the last mat has been picked up. Really important. So with this harder version, a couple of other things that you can do as well to add to the challenge. One great thing to do is to insist that when the mats are placed on the floor, they then can't be moved other than by being picked up and moved around to the front of the group. So that stops them from just sliding on them and moving along in that way. Other ways you can add challenge in, you can have fewer mats than there are people, for obvious reasons, that makes it much trickier. And you could also insist that uh, the team, when they're on the mats and traversing across the route, they do that in silence, so there's no verbal communication. And of course, a great way to add some real spice into it is to have multiple teams operating in parallel to each other and in competition. So in these times of uh, physical distancing, social distancing, we're now going to share with you a couple of variations on the task whereby we can ensure that the team members are always staying two meters apart. So this version of the task enables social distancing to take place. So rather than just having a simple start line and a finish line and traversing straight through, uh, more or less with the team snaking together one behind the other, here we've replicated um, a river maybe with a river bank, a starting bank, and then a finish bank on the other side as well. And the nice thing about having a curve like this is with socially distanced team members standing around, we can still communicate, make eye contact, plan and organize ourselves uh, throughout the task. The other different difference here as well is we're gonna give them two types of mats. We've got the original type of mat, which is the square mat. This is going to be our stepping stones mat. So this is the one that whenever we place down on the floor, we have to make sure we stay in physical human contact with it at all times. So this is the movable one, okay? And then secondly, we give them the round mats in this case, uh, and they could be square or rectangular, or they could be hula hoops or whatever. But these are the island mats. 
So the difference here is they don't have to maintain physical human contact with them at all times, but once the mat is placed on the floor and touches the floor, it cannot move from that position. So my starting point could be to enter the river here. I can stand on my stepping stones mat and then I can place an island mat. I don't have to keep contact with that one, but now that's a fixed item. So I can move on to this one. I have to make sure I'm bringing this one behind me. That's really, really important. And then I can continue my journey. Perhaps we passed another mat by somebody as well. And then you can kind of move across in that particular way. So again, some of the rules that have to be adhered to here, you have to make sure that mats don't get dragged or moved. Obviously the stepping stones one, so once they're placed on the floor, they have to remain there, but if physical contact has to also be maintained and then you can move it to a new position. The two meter rule also gets applied here. So if any team members come closer than two meters to each other, then you send the whole team back to the beginning. So that's quite a strategic little exercise uh, in its own right. A couple of other things that you can do that really raise the bar here, you could insist that as they traverse across and the whole team gets to the far side, then also the island mats have to come with them as well. So they're here for as long as they need them, but then they have to be picked up and brought across too. You could also say, uh, suggest that the whole team has to move into and be on the river before the first team member can actually move across the step onto the far bank. Again, that throws in a strategic curveball because they've got to think about the positioning of where all these people are going to go. And thirdly, another little curveball you could throw in is you could say that the islands are only above the surface of the river for a short period of time. It could be two minutes or three minutes. And then if they don't pick them up and reposition them, then they're lost to the team. So they sink beneath the surface. So there's all sorts of ways that you can kind of add to this. And no doubt you'll think of many different ways yourself of two. So there you have it, that's Stepping Stones, uh, an exercise that will draw out lots and lots of learning around team working, good communication, collaboration, but also strategy and planning as well. Um, and make sure that you build in some of these, uh, these different sort of additional factors that can really stretch and test your, your young learn learners as much as possible. Uh, as with all of the films, uh, you've got the written instructions both for the straightforward, non-socially distanced version and also the socially distanced version as well. We've got two different briefing sheets, one for each. Uh, so those can be, they can be downloaded by just clicking on the link underneath the video and uh, make sure that you like the film. That'd be great if you could do that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, share it as much as you possibly can, use it as much as you possibly can and have loads and loads of fun with it. We'll see you next time.